Uh, hii bill ambayo mwenzangu ameleta ya kupatia watoto wa kike nafasi ya pili kusoma mheshimiwa speaker. Mheshimiwa speaker na nilitaka sana kuzungumza kuwa hao watoto ambao wanapewa nafasi ya pili wengi wako ile under age umri wa chini. Walipata ujauzito pengine walinajisiwa ama pengine kuna wale ambao walikuwa na forced marriages walikuwa hawana uwezo kwa hiyo wanapewa nafasi ya pili kupata masomo mheshimiwa wa speaker. Mheshimiwa wa speaker ndani ya Mombasa County kama mama county nimeregesha wastoto wa kike hamsini na walipia full scholarship na ngafu warudi darasani wasome kwa sababu mheshimiwa wa speaker sisi tunataka uongozi wa mwanamke lakini uongozi wa mwanamke una matatizo mengi sana mpaka afikie kiwango cha kuweza kuingia katika uongozi lazima awe amepata elimu ya kutosha mheshimiwa wa speaker na utapata wakati mwingi mheshimiwa wa speaker mtoto wa kiume ambaye amempa mtoto wa kike ujauzito yeye anaendelea na masomo yake mtoto wa kike anabaki nyumbani mheshimiwa wa speaker mimi nimewapa wale watoto nafasi mheshimiwa wa speaker mpaka sasa mwaka huu watoto ambao wamemaliza kidato cha nne na watoto moja. niko na wengine ambao wako form 1 form 2 form 3 na wanaendelea vizuri na wengine wameungama wengine hata walikuwa wameingia kwenye madawa ya kulevya kwa sababu ya stress anashindwa angalie mtoto anatamani apate elimu ili aweze kupata kazi amekwama mheshimiwa wa speaker kwa hiyo mimi kitu ambacho nataka kusema ni kweli hii bill inahitaji pesa ikiwa kama watataka watoto wapewe sehemu ya kulelewa shuleni basi lazima kuwe na mpango ambao serikali itawekeza pesa ya kuangalia hizi sehemu ambazo watoto watalelewa lakini kwa ufupi mheshimiwa speaker mimi naunga mtoto wa kike ama young mother aweze kuregeshwa shuleni ikiwa bado ana tamaa ya elimu na mimi katika wale wa mama ambao wana hawa watoto kwa sababu mpaka sasa hatuna sehemu za kuweka watoto wao shuleni nimewaweka hawa kina mama pamoja ambao ni wa mama wa hawa young mothers nimewapa mradi mtaji wanafanya biashara waweze kulea hawa watoto na hawa wenzao wakisoma kwa hiyo mheshimiwa speaker mimi naunga mkono japokuwa na na mashtaka moja mheshimiwa speaker hata ino bili ino mimi nimeitoa kitambo nimeweka kule tebo, uh, uh, katika nimetable pale katika sehemu ya kuweka bills mpaka sasa ijakuja mheshimiwa speaker lakini yangu ilikuwa na sehemu nzuri nzuri ambazo wamekuwa kiuliza kwa sababu nilijua kwa dhati kuwa hino lazima itakuwa ni money bill lazima itahitaji mapendi itahitaji funding na ya, ya, ya kusikitisha hata zaidi mheshimiwa speaker hao watoto wengine wamepata ujauzito kwa sababu wengine walikosa sodo mtoto amedanganywa na mandazi akajua nitapata mia kununua sodo ni ondoa aibu mara kienda kukutana na huyo mwanaume anapata ujauzito na mpaka sasa mimi nasikitika sodo za Mombasa pia bado hazijafika licha ya kuwa mama county najibidiisha kuregesha hawa watoto shuleni lakini nina wasiwasi mimba zitazidi watazidi kupata mimba kwa ukosefu wa sodo mheshimiwa speaker na sisi tuko pamoja hata wewe pia ni mama county umeona tunalalamika tunaomba wale ambao wamepewa nafasi ya kutuletea sodo katika counties zetu waweze kuzileta ili tuweze kutoa kwa watoto lakini namuunga mkono na mimi na yangu ambayo ni nzuri sana na ileta ambayo tutaweza kuijadili iko na vitengo tofauti tofauti. Hino ni money bill na inahitaji mgao ili iweze kusaidia. Asante sana mheshimiwa speaker. Asante sana the honorable member for Seme honorable James Nikau. I can see you are you on the intervention. Thank you madam speaker. Uh, this is a very interesting bill. Whereas in principle This bill is actually very important for the girl child the support of the girl child but there are very basic issues about this bill and some of them have been raised that actually when i saw it the first thing it is a money bill also this bill is actually going to interact with very many other uh, acts of parliament and therefore I've, i've gone through and i've not seen how you are putting transition clauses that will raise those issues Other than that madam speaker it is an important bill because it what we are really dealing with here we are dealing with adolescent pregnancy 
And we are actually dealing with a biological problem in the context of a society that is changing. That is the problem before us. There is increasing early puberty of, in, in, in children, both boys and girls. And therefore, there is increased sexual activity very early. And with the liberal upbringing and even the liberal uh, provisions, even in our laws that are protective, it therefore brings this as a big problem. Therefore, it is actually necessary to address that. Girls uh, get into pubescent very early. Menarche comes extremely early. And when there is menarche, the starting period, they are actually ovulating. And therefore, they are capable of getting pregnant. And yet, they are still children. And with the empowerment of the girl child we have brought, there's a freedom that has come. And as a, as a society, are we taking care of that? That is what some members are actually raising, that how shall we deal with the psychological orientation, the traditional orientation, the cultural orientation? That is actually where we start. Because if we take a strict legal definition, then anybody below 18 is a child. And if the law was nature, then they shouldn't get pregnant. But the law is not nature. So we are dealing with a legal situation against a biological situation. And the, these children will actually need a lot of psychological support, even if before we start thinking of education. And if they get pregnant, the impact is huge, both physiologically, physically, mentally, and even in their development, because some of them actually get pregnant before maturity of their organs. That's a big problem. So, and if you look at development, the greatest developmental impact will be in the, 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 on the education. They cannot go on with education. And I think this is where this bill is coming. On that aspect, I support that we should find a way that these children will go back to school. But then we, we come and talking of their protection. You are actually now protecting two children. The mother is a child, the baby is a child. And we are now also bringing in centers that have been created. And if you look at what is, we, are, we are indicating in the center, we are even talking of children, these children giving birth at the centers. So that center becomes an extremely complex center that we are, we, are, we are dealing with. So, Madam Speaker, in terms of education, I think the most important thing that we are actually addressing and we look at this is how do they get to school? What psychological support do they need when they go to school? What physical support? And the support of the baby, because some of them will come from families that are actually so disadvantaged, they can't look after a baby that is left behind. We are saying in this bill that that, that can also be done at the centers. So if you look at this center, this center is complex, it's huge. And how are we going to set it up without money? And therefore this must be first and foremost looked at as, as, as a money bill. So this bill, in my view, we really need to relook at it. I support it in principle, but as I as, as set out now, I think if passed as it is, I think we'll, it will give us a lot of problems in its handling. So my view, I'll say, is that we need to relook at this bill, whether we withdraw it and bring it again, whether we look at it in, in a much more broader sense. But as it is, it's a good principle. It's something we should pursue, but not as it is now. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. The Honorable Member for Kibra, Honorable Peter Arero. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. I just want to add my voice on this bill. And I think all the bills which come to this House should always pass through the Budget Committee. And when they pass through the Budget Committee, we have them either designated as money bill or not money bill. But what is most important is about how it is assumed that under 17 years is a child. I support this 
based on our current law. I remember, but culturally, when we were young, like myself, my mother was married at 17 years, and see how health healthy I am. She, she gave birth to seven healthy men and three healthy ladies. So, just as my colleague, Dr. Terry here, is talking about uh, two children, sometimes our culture makes our young girls to be married under our cultural norms. I, I would know where you come from. Sometimes the Wazes will always say that their daughters be married because of certain circumstances. But uh, in the eyes of the law, I know that it is assumed that anybody under 18 is a, a, a guy, a child, but I support the bill because it is going to enrich our, 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 our cultural values, it is going to enrich our society and will take care of our young uh, girls. Otherwise, I support the bill. Honorable member for Dagoretti, I can see you on the intervention button. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, while I know this is a bill that every woman will support and ensure that indeed there's protection and care of every child, and the challenges we have faced, Madam Speaker, so much in uh, issues of children today, that you find today, um, I'll give you a story, Madam Speaker. Just recently, there's a girl who went to the Swedish embassy. She's supposed to travel to Sweden. But because since she was born, she has never communicated to the father or anything, the parent was told that they need the father's consent. Or she goes to court and uh, the mother to file um, a sole custody of the child. So you realize in such things, you need now the law to be very clear especially for Kenyan children, because we can't also uh, enforce parents uh, or husbands when they leave their wives that you need to fight. And this sometimes can bring trauma to a child. So Madam Speaker, when I talk about the care and protection of a child parents bill, it's a bill that will assist in many things because the law internationally comes out, and within the Children's Act, we also have that protection. As they say, it might be a money bill or not a money bill, but I think it will be a money bill because there are some issues that will come out and will be raised. So that, Madam Speaker, also we have to look at it. But this is a very important bill that every woman in this house must support this bill because it's going to help very many families that are finding themselves in this challenge. And also you find that children who are in orphanages, Madam Speaker. So a child has lived in an orphanage, let's say her whole or his whole life. But then you realize when they come to the age of 17, they will want to now start, what's my identity? And those are some of the things we are saying. As you bring in care, both parents must agree. And if a child will also come out and say, I have never seen you as a father or a mother. And they decide the parent that has taken care of her is that parent that has taken care of Madam Speaker. Then I'm hoping in the bill, we are also trying to ensure we are safeguarding such children. That yes, you have a biological parent, but that parent never bothered about you. And so you went and found a foster parent who has taken care of you as a parent. In fact, nobody even knows whether this is your parent or not your parent. That is what the bill should be also addressing because we have very many children today who are in that scenario. Madam Speaker, this Senate bill co-sponsored by Beatrice Kemei is also a bill that needs now to look at the different laws that we have for children, and so, so that we don't find ourselves having an overlap 
So when you go to court, the judge is supposed to read the Children's Act, but you remember always the Constitution now takes present and uh, you have to ensure it's the principal law. And so how do we ensure uh, we don't find ourselves uh, in a court where now you, are, you have to quote so many laws for children to get their rights. So I think as we debate it, it will be very important for us to also look at those amendments and see whether we can bring in our own amendments also to enrich the bill more so that it takes care. If we are taking care and protection, then it protects the child. How do we ensure also it protects a child who is a minor, but has also gone through a lot and is now in a juvenile court and needs assistance. Because I've realized, and I'll give an example, even though he's beyond a minor, this young man who just decided to beat a policeman. But nobody questioned whether this young man has had his own trauma has gone through a lot, is a child either who has a single parent and is unable to understand what he's going through. But we cascade and it's something we are doing very much to many children today as, as they grow and they are becoming more hardcore and more aggressive in their lives to protect themselves. So as we talk of care and protection, of a child, we must also address the issues of parents in that, and that if indeed a parent at a point that you have not stayed with your child for more than 10 years, then you can't just walk into this life and say, now you have arrived. There must be a process. That process has to be well stipulated within the bill, Madam Speaker, and therefore, I beg to support. Thank you, the Honorable Member for Kisauni. Asante sana, Madam Speaker. Kunipa fursa kuweza kuchangia msada huu. Nechukua nafasi pia kuwaumbea nafasi ya pili wale wa toto wetu wa kike ambao wanapata ajali ya kuwa na ujauzito. Ni viema asiachwe nje apewe nafasi ya weze kurudi aendelee na masomo yake uh, na vile vile mswada huu unaelekea kwamba utahitaji fedha kwa sababu ikiwa itahitaji kwamba kuwe na majengo ya kuweza kuangalia watoto katika shule hizo itahitaji fedha na ikiwa itahitaji fedha ni kwamba huu mswada utachukua muda mrefu sana lakini mheshimiwa Zamzam ameleta mswada ambao utakuwa rahisi kwa kuwalinda watoto wetu wa kike kwa hivyo ni imekaa tu pale kwa table office haikuji Hiyo sioni shida, sioni tatizo liko wapi. Na hiyo ingetuletea njia rahisi ya kuwasaidia watoto wa kike. Yeye mheshimiwa Zamzam anasaidia, ameonesha Mo anasaidia watoto zaidi ya msini kule sehemu ya kaunti ya Mombasa. Wanao walipata ujauzito. Kwa hivyo tunaomba kwamba hiyo yake iharakishwe iweze kuja. Na vile vile watoto wa kike tunasema mujistiri ndio watoto wetu msije mkapata hii mambo ya mimba za mapema. Haziwasaidii. Kwa hivyo mimi Madam Speaker nimesimama uh, kusupport kwamba watoto wa kike wapoe second chance lakini pia wajistiri ili wasije ili jambo likaone la mazoea. Na hii yote sababishwa na mgoka. Lakini tunawatakia kula laheri uh, Mungu awabariki wa waweze kujistiri ili waendelee na masomo mpaka wafike vyo vikuu. Asante sana Madam Speaker. The honorable member for Marakwet West Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I rise to support this very progressive piece of legislation that is the Care and Protection of Child Parents Bill 2023. Honorable Speaker, this group of parents, the, what you call child parents, have for, for a long period of time been neglected by the society and Honorable Speaker, it is time that their fundamental rights are taken into account in order to protect them. Honorable Speaker, these are parents who are below the age of 18 years. These are parents 
who have born children at that particular age. Honorable Speaker, this group of parents I have suffered discrimination and abuse from the Kenyan community. Honorable Speaker, this bill, of course, when it comes to the second reading, I will propose certain amendments that will go into the substance of the bill. Honorable Speaker, this bill further goes to provide what you call counseling and support services for those children who are, for those mothers who have born children below and are below the age of 18 years. Honorable Speaker, this element of counseling and support is very, very vital and important so that we nurture that young parent. Honorable Speaker, also the issue of confidentiality. Under section, under clause 14 of the bill, it provides very clearly that every case of a child who falls pregnant in an institution of basic education and training shall be handled by the management of the institution in a manner that ensures confidentiality. These young children who are parents, when they get pregnant at a young age, normally they are, they are embarrassed, they are cajoled, and it is time that their rights are protected and the issue of pregnancy be made confidential. Honorable Speaker, under Clause 15 of the bill, this is an area that we must look forward and propose an amendment to it. Honorable Speaker, as a lawyer yourself, if you read that clause very carefully, it says where it is determined that a person is responsible for pregnancy. Honorable Speaker, this is not right because at this stage, unless a paternity test is undertaken, you cannot determine at this stage whether someone is responsible for the pregnancy or not. So I will propose an amendment to the effect that where it is um, suspected, because at this stage, the element of suspicion comes in. It is only during paternity that a matter is determined with finality whether that person is the parent of the child or not. So, Honorable Speaker, that is an area that we must be able to, to, uh, to look at carefully so that we also protect the interests of that would be father of that child. Honorable Speaker, under Article 50 of the Constitution, we have something called presumption of innocence until proven guilty. So at this stage, that would be father should be presumed innocent until proven guilty by a competent court of law. Honorable Speaker, the bill further goes further to protect the interests of that child by subjecting that suspect under this particular proposed law to certain legal processes. Honorable Speaker, the teacher's code of regulations is very clear on how to handle issues of teachers who are suspected of impregnating students. And the law is very clear on that, and I believe, Honorable Speaker, this clause should be read alongside the Teacher Service Commission Act of 2012 plus the Code of Regulation of Teachers of 2015, because it cannot be read in isolation. As it is here, Honorable Speaker, it is not determinate, it is not certain, it has not provided a clear framework on how to handle the issue of teachers. But I believe that we should have a clause that this law should be read together, of course, with the uh, Teacher Service Commission Act and um, the Code of Regulations. Honorable Speaker, on the issue of readmission, young children, young girls who have been out of school, cut us your pregnancy, have had it difficult going back to school. Schools have been reluctant to readmit young girls who got pregnant and therefore were not able to complete their studies. Now that we have a legal framework, we have a specific law that provides, that mandates our institutions from readmitting those young girls who have been out of school out because of pregnancies. Honorable Speaker, finally, I support the establishment of, of care centers. Normally, most parents are not willing to embrace. When I say parents, I mean the mother of the child parents are not at times willing to take care of these young children who have been born. So, Honorable Speaker, the issue of caregivers is very important, is very vital, so that 
children born by young parents or what you call the child parents can be taken care of by uh, other care centers. So, Honorable Speaker, this is very progressive and I support this bill and I call upon the members of parliament that when it comes to the second reading, let us give the necessary amendments and pass the bill as it is. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. The Honorable Member for Tindiret, Honorable Julius Melly. Madam Speaker, I rise to support this bill. And I want first of all to commend the co-sponsor and the Senate for coming out with such a very progressive bill, more specifically and uh, tailored to the, to the parent-child. Madam Speaker, many people in this country do not know the existence of parent-children and these are children who are underage, who are actually less than 18 years. And they are as young as 10 years old. Madam Speaker, this bill seeks to really bring into, into perspective who a young parent is or who is a, a child parent. The bill seeks, among many others, to first of all tell the society that there is a parent who is not of age, who is giving birth, who has a child, the two of them are not of age. Two, it also when goes ahead to really note that this child parent has a right to go to school, has a right to medical care. A number of them, when they are giving birth, their, metabol their, their body systems are still very weak. They need a lot of medical attention. They need to undergo clinical checkups every other time. But as the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics has just pointed out, majority of the child parents are actually in rural areas, in pastoral communities, in households where the income is very low. This bill actually seeks to really bring awareness and to ensure that this particular child parent rights are well taken care of as stated in the constitution that one the child parent has to have proper uh, medical care the child parent has to undergo a lot of support socially psychologically and economically this is a child who gets pregnant when she's in primary school this is a child who gets expectant and having a baby when she is less than 12 or 13 or 14 years old. And every other time, she is actually stigmatized. And she is not even allowed to be heard. As the bills indicates, some schools, majority of them, do actually force, take forced uh, pregnancy tests on these children. And immediately they are rediscovered, they are actually stigmatized. They are ostracized by the school heads, by parents, by communities, and they are actually shunned. This is the time now we need to take up and own. This is a serious problem. 15% of all the girls are actually have either become pregnant, have either lost a child. That particular, that particular percentage, Madam Speaker, is very high and alarming. It is as a result of this bill, therefore, that the county governments are actually being alerted and told to come up with ways on how to stop this particular child, uh, the, 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 the young pregnancies, and more specifically, the child parent. After the child has given birth, she's, the parents are supposed to know that it's not the end of their education. They are supposed to be given permission to go to school. The parents of the parent child who are the grandparents of the young child, are supposed to take care of this child. Take care of her, allow the mother child to go up to school, finish her education, and therefore realize her dreams as a Kenyan. Madam Speaker, this bill further goes on to ensure that we established centers which will take care of these children in areas where the real parents are not able to do that. That's why county governments have been robbed in and are in 